Hey, welcome back. I'm Chad, and I have another real Law of Attraction stories. This is going to be episode two, and in episode two, we're going to face a little dilemma. This is going to take a spin, okay? This just doesn't relate to Law of Attraction, because in Law of Attraction, the core to Law of Attraction is we're trying to make our lives better, okay? That's what we're trying to do, is make us, make us better so we want more in our lives. We want a better life. Okay, that's basically what's going on. And when we want a better life, we're going to be faced with a dilemma. Okay, and this dilemma is probably the number one thing we're going to face. And it's a negative. It's not a positive. Everybody's going to go through this when you're trying just to better your life. That's what we're going to discuss today on this episode of Real Law of Attraction Secrets. So hang in there. Let's get rocking and rolling. I put in my handy dandy reading glasses so that way I can read it. And don't mess up. I might mess up. But anyway, let's get rocking. He says, coming from a lower middle class Irish family, there's a vicious crab pot mentality of success passed from generation to generation. It's a bizarre ideology of glorifying suffering over succeeding. Personally, I've always been intelligent and imaginative and succeeded in highly unconventional ways that have been met with criticism and decision. As I've grown up, I've had to come to terms with the fact that I don't relate to these people. I've related to the literary heroes like Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan Mantos, Neville Goddard, Edmond Dantes, Jay Gatsby, the blurry line between real men and fictional characters I admired and aspired to be. I have faith that selling everything to, to buy the pearl of great price has been the best decision I've ever made. And this really struck a chord to me when I read this. And I apologize. You know, I'll show a snippet of this, of course, going through. I apologize if I kind of butcher names in there. You know, I, I going through high school, I pretty much got a D and F in English. <laughs> <laughs> so you might be able to tell when I read, but this really struck a chord to me. And, you know, I used to teach on this years ago and I'll take off my glasses. No need of wearing my glasses at this point. And when he brought up the, when he said the vicious crab pot mentality, okay, this really struck a chord. And anytime, what we have to understand is anytime that we want to make a positive change in our life, we're going to face criticism and we're going to face cri criticism like this, like this guy faced, you know, in this, in his, in his scenario here that he wrote out. And, you know, it really struck a chord because, you know, I can relate to it, you know, and, and I can relate to it through several different phases of my life. And, and when we face criticism, when we're trying to better our lives, it's not just about law of attraction. We're trying to better our life. We're, tr we're trying to make things better for us. You know, each generation, you know, if you look at it from, you know, from grant, from, from our grandparents to our parents to now to us, and maybe we have kids, you know, lots of times when we look at things is that, that each generation is getting better and better and better. So it's, you know, when we get into the levels of abundance, abundance is inside us, that, you know, things, things should increase, things should get better. We want everybody to see, see it our way, but sometimes, sometimes they don't. And sometimes we're faced with criticism. You know, when we're trying to better our lives, you know, people, you know, it's our own family. In the beginning, it's really our core people that we hang around. You know, it's our, it can be our parents. It can be our aunts and uncles. It can be our siblings. If we have brothers and sisters, it could be our friends, our best friends. You know, when we want to better our lives, we think everybody's going to root for us. Everybody's behind us, cheering us on. And when, when that doesn't happen, lots of times we throw in a towel. Lots of times we stop. Okay, we, we let the criticism of other people, and it's not just not other people, it's our loved ones. Okay, it's people that we care about. It's people that their opinions, we really kind of honor their opinions. And when we, when they criticize us or give us a, you know, a negative, you know, negative feedback, and sometimes, and sometimes it's just direct criticism, negative criticism. You know, sometimes it's done as a joke. You know, people love to joke around. 
but their joke kind of has a negative connotation to it that we kind of pick up on. But right then and there, we kind of have to make a decision. A lot of people throw in a towel right there. They can't handle it. You know what I mean? When all of a sudden aunts and uncles, all of a sudden our parents that which we admire, or maybe it's a brother and sister we're super close to, okay, and we look up to them, okay, we look up to them, like, what, I mean, what do they think? You know, we might ask for advice, what do they think? Okay, it might just, they might just come to it, they might just come to us one day, and because we're trying to better our lives, we're doing all this personal development, and all of a sudden they just pop your bubble, all of a sudden they just say, Hey, you know, look, Chad, like, you know, I know you ended all this stuff, all this positivity, but, but, you know, I'm just here to tell you, it's not going to work. You know, I tried it. All my people, all my, all my friends tried it, you know, family before you tried it, but they never got out. They never broke the cycle. And lots of times when they say this stuff, their words kind of creep in our mind. Okay. You know, we kind of think and ponder what they say to us. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a disease at that point. Uh, just because we we kind of value their opinion, uh, you know, we love them. They're they're family, and you know, it could even come from you know, even even different scenarios throughout my life. It can come from best friends, not just parents. It could come from a significant a significant other. Maybe you're married, okay, your wife or your husband, okay. You really you really into personal development. You're really into. I'm not even going to say law of attraction. But you just want something better. You want to better your life. You want to be a better person. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, your significant other is criticizing you, kind of putting you down. Or maybe they're doing it in a joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're kind of jokingly kind of putting you down, which kind of, which kind of, kind of is really the same thing. Rather than just criticizing you, they're kind of doing it as a joke. Okay. And, and this is something we're all going to face. We're all going to go through. And this kind of struck a really a core to me. And I gave you a lot of examples here because I really want, want you to see it can come from many different scenarios. It can come from your job. You know, lots of times when I take a job, I'm kind of like happy and bubbly a little bit at the job. You know, this is just recently I, I was working at a factory. I never worked in a factory in my life. A lot of people that work in a factory sometimes are beat up. You know, they're beat up by life. They're beat up. They're they're working in a factory. Then when you go work at a factory, sometimes a factory, when you work in a factory, sometimes it's not the best place to work. You know, sometimes, you know, especially in these small towns, I'm looking around because I look, you know, right now I'm in a small town and, you know, you're, you're taking crap from supervisors, floor leads, you know, team leads, you know, people who manage you. Uh, Sometimes they don't talk the best to you you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I would always be like happy and bubbly on the factory floor and, and, you know, have conversations with people and they would ask me, you know, what I'm doing. I'll be excited about what I'm doing. And even there, when I just acquaintances, I hardly know, they offer criticism. Okay. Sometimes they jokingly put it down. You have other people just directly put it down because they don't care. You know what I mean? So they're trying to pop your bubble. You know, they're trying to keep you at the place that you're at because you know your family your friends what they're really trying to do and maybe consciously they're not really trying to do it but subconsciously what they're trying to do they're afraid that you're going to outgrow them they're afraid you're going to leave them you know that's really why they do it but they want to kind of keep you where they're at and this is why I'm kind of getting to a long-winded version of the story but this is what kind of struck me with his with his uh, message and email, when we come back to the crab pop mentality, you know, the crab pop mentality, you no, know, this is a true mentality and this is true. Okay. When you take crabs and when fishermen would go fish for crabs, they would catch them, catch them in the nets, pull them in. And then when they store crabs, they store them in a great big, sometimes a great big, you know, I want to say a pot or a kettle, but we're not cooking them yet, but it's just a great big bucket. You know, sometimes it's a big bucket that stands a high. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's a great big bucket, a great big pail. What's unique about it is that they don't put a top on the bucket. Okay, they fill the bucket full of crabs, but none of the crabs escape. This is real life. This is true. None of the crabs escape. Why? Why don't the crabs escape? You think the crabs will just crawl, crawl the bucket and crawl over the crawl all over the boat and the ship and get back in the water? 
but none of the crabs escape. Why? Because as when, when you put crabs in a bucket, as the crabs on the top, as they start trying to climb out, the other crabs pull them down and keep them exactly where they're at. So you have one trap, one crab trying to escape. As they're trying to climb up and try to escape, all they have to do is climb a little bit and flop over the bucket and they're, they're, and they're free. But as they're trying to climb up, other crabs pull them down and keep them exactly where, where they're at in their life. And this is the metaphor for life. Okay. This is the metaphor for exactly what you're dealing with. If you're dealing with this scenario. And the metaphor is, it's a crab metaphor. As you're trying to better your life, it's the crab theory. You know, as you're trying to better your life, the metaphor is, as you're trying to climb out of the bucket, your friends and your family, your best friends, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, acquaintances, okay, if you're at work, they have words of criticism flowing at you. Some are just harsh words. Some are just, they're done in a joke. But their words of criticism are meant to pull you down and keep you exactly where you're at. Okay? We all go through this. And and, and if you haven't gone through it, you're going to go through it. Okay? I promise you that. Okay? You're going to go through it some way or another. Maybe not from, by parents. Maybe not from, maybe not from a brother and sister. But maybe from friends or best friends, or just acquaintances where you work. You're going to go through it, okay? Words of criticism are going to creep in, and it's really meant to keep you exactly where you're at. It's really meant to keep you, not to outgrow your situation, outgrow your friends, or outgrow your family. Okay, that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid that you're going to outgrow them, and you're going to leave them, and you'll never be around again. That's what. That's why they're kind of giving you, basically, words of criticism. Words of negativity to keep you exactly where you're at. That's exactly what he's kind of referring to when he says the crab pot mentality. And you know, I, I'm gonna end it with this. You no, know, even from even from parents, and a lot of times your parents want the best thing for you. Makes sense. All parents want the best thing for them. All parents want the best thing for their kids. Okay. But sometimes parents, you know, they want to keep you close to them. Okay, but maybe maybe in your heart you want you want to travel the world, you want to travel to different countries. You maybe like me, like I, I went off, I lived in LA for twenty years. I kind of did a lot of traveling. Then I lived in Thailand for a year. Then I, then I come back as much as I can to visit. Okay, then in my heart is I love to do these things. Okay, I love to work remote and, and be able to travel and kind of see the world. That's kind of what I like to do. Not everybody, not not everybody's like me. Okay. But I also know that, like my mom, kind of basically wants me here. She wants to, she wants to see me or see me more. Okay, sometimes she can be passive aggressive or you know saying certain things because you know she wants me kind of here, and I have to understand that. You know, the more I understand or understand how, where it's coming from, I don't look at it as so much of a negative. Okay, I don't look at it so much of a negative criticism because I I know where it's coming from. I know that. In her own way, she really just wants me here so she can see me every day or see me every week. It's not she's kind of afraid, like, well, if I go if I go off and live somewhere, then she'll never see me again. That's how she's thinking in her mind. You know, the, the more I understand this, the more I can more I can I can I can really understand well how my mom's thinking. That way I don't take it so much as a negative. But at the same time, you know, I gotta do what I got to do. I got to do what kind of brings me joy in life. And you know, I got to be able to communicate that, hey, you know, it doesn't mean that I don't love you. It doesn't mean that I don't want to see you. But this kind of stuff brings joy in my life. And I'm always going to come back and visit and stuff like that. If I go, if I go to Thai, Thai, Thailand to live, you know, I, well, I can't stay there for forever because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the age of retirement. I don't have a retirement visa. I can't, you know, I can't stay there forever. I only can stay there for the length of my visa and that's it. And I got to come back. <laughs> now I can come back and file another visa and go, but, but, uh, but I, you know, my whole goal is to you know, be able to travel, come back and visit, go travel, come back and visit. You see what I'm saying? You can't let it stop you. You can't let negative criticism 
stop you. And it stops so many people. It really does. And if it stops you, maybe you're watching this and that kind of it kind of brings a new kind of wave of life. Like, hey, you know, I'll let it stop me. I'll let other people's opinions stop me. You know, this is what I really want to do. And go do it. Okay, don't let people stop you. Just understand what's really going on. When they try to stop you with words as a joke, or maybe it's not a joke, really what they're trying to do is they really want to keep you where they are. They don't want you to outgrow them. Okay. Now, sometimes they, you know, they don't want you to outgrow them because they're afraid that they're, they're going to lose you. They might not see you again. You might not relate to them. Okay. And other, other times they don't want you to outgrow them because plain and simple, they don't want you to be better than they are. Okay. Maybe they don't want you to make more money than they do. Make sense. Okay. But lo and behold, okay, let's wrap this up because I'm kind of like, uh, uh, going off on tangents here is don't let it stop you. Don't let the crab pot theory mentality stop you. Understand what's going on when people criticize you. They're just trying to pull you down to their level and keep you exactly where you're at. You have to go through it. You can't dodge it. You can kind of walk around it. No matter how you get around it, you go right, you know, you walk right through the middle of it. Or you're walking around it, but you have to go through it. And you have to understand sooner or later in your life, you're going to go through this with people. The more you understand that, the more you understand what's going on, the better the better for you because the better you can kind of push through it. The better you understand the mentality, well, this is what's happening. I still need to push through because what you want is right on the other side. What you want is right on the other side of fear. That's basically the promised land. We got to push forward. We gotta become better. We gotta face our fears. Because what we want, our dream life, no matter what that is for you, is right on the other side. Other than that, my friends, hopefully this helps, and I'll see you in the next video.